Hi, I'm Sarah Worf. This video is for a project called Make a Face, a pouchoir project. Pouchoir is a French term that means hand stenciling or stencil painting, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with a paper collage of a face. It could be an animal, could be a human, could be a monster, could be any combination of those things. Then we're gonna cut hand stencils and we're gonna then print through the stencils, pouchoir, and make a whole series of prints done with different colors and different organization of the stencils. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. There are gonna be two videos for this one project. This is a two week project. In week one, you're going to make your collage. You're also going to cut stencils that relate to that collage. And so this is what is going to be um, gone over in this video. Then week two, next week, um, he, uh, the other video will show you how to then stencil those, um, or how to print those stencils, I should say, and how to create a variety of prints based on a single set of stencils. Step one is make your collage. What you need for this are three pieces of paper that are colored. Um, I, this is just cardstock that I have. It could be construction paper, it could be um, scrapbooking paper, and then you need another sheet of paper to use as the base that you're gonna glue your collage down onto. This is in lieu of a sketch, so I don't recommend you start with a drawing. You just start by manipulating shapes and come up with the face that you like for your project. As I said before, it could be a human, it could be an animal or a monster, any combination of that. Your minimum size for your face is six by six inches. You don't want to get any larger than that because our stencil material isn't really big enough for that and so it'll cause difficulty in printing down the line. You also have to just use three colors. And the reason I'm having that as a requirement is that I want you to really think about how can you zero down and simplify a face down into just three colors and yet have a really good contrast and really show all the different shapes that you're putting in that face. So when you choose your colors, be sure you're choosing very high contrast colors from each other as well as from the base paper. So it's very easy to see the different layers of your collage. My sample collage here is about six and a half by seven, so you can get a little bit bigger. You're also gonna need scissors, a glue stick, or yes paste, um, and a pencil probably, and a cutting mat, and an X-Acto. Although for the collages, I just used a um, scissors, but it's nice to use an X-Acto if you wanna go in and cut even smaller little details. This is stenciling, and our stencil material has a certain thickness to it, so you can't get really, really small, detailed um, shapes when you go to print, so keep that in mind. Keep this definitely having a variety of shapes and forms and edges and good balance and size of shapes and things like that, but also don't get too teeny uh, with stuff because uh, it just will be extremely difficult to print through our stencil material. So. Here's, here's another face I was just uh, messing around with, and I just started, started messing around, you know, cut a circle or a face, you know, a shape that looked like a face, cut some hair, <laughs> and, um, you know, I want you guys to play. There's no set requirement about what this, you know, person or um, monster or whatever is supposed to look like, so just have fun with this. Also, you might be thinking, um, this looks rather simplistic, right? And rather um, dumb or, you know, juvenile looking or whatever. When you go to do your stenciling, you can take these shapes that might look very simplistic at this point, but you could make them much more sophisticated by how you print them. So don't, um, don't worry about that. You know, just think about what kind of shapes do you like? How do you want to put this together? Something that you're interested in, proud of. You can see how very different this one is from this one. One thing I found from doing this one is I really liked playing with the hair and overlapping the stencils for the hair. So I want to already set up some shapes that I could play around with that in how I cut the stencils. Also, the 
colors that you're doing your original collage on, you don't necessarily have to cut those stencils in the same exact way or in the same groupings. Obviously in this I'm overlapping my yellow, um, which isn't as clear as this one, but at least I can still see the really clear shapes. And so when I translate that onto the stencils, um, I can group them in different ways because obviously I can't have this and this be on the same stencil. Once you've figured out where you want everything to go, and if you're going to do different variations, you could even take pictures with your phone in between to remind yourself of, of uh, different combinations and if you liked how they went together. When you're ready to commit, just glue everything down with a glue stick. This is, I, I'm considering this a, um, a sketch. So don't worry too much about craft and stuff. I mean, I want it to be clean, but if there's still pencil marks where you drew some ideas out before you cut them, that's fine, just erase them, but you don't have to be too crazy neatnik in how you glue this together. What I like to do when I'm gluing is have an old magazine uh, that I can glue on, and this gives me a surface that's disposable. So, Again, you, you could take a photo just to be sure where this is gonna go. The nice thing about having these is if I want to put the glue off the edges, it'll just go onto the magazine page. Oh, I guess I'm doing it upside down. And when there's glue on this, I can just fold this and make a new clean surface. Because this is a sketch, you do not have to glue everything really flat on here. You can just make it so it stays in one place. There's a project requirement that things overlap, so be sure that you're doing that. I don't just want, say, a white face, you know, background or something with parts of the eye, uh, face floating around or anything. Definitely want to see overlapping, overlapping of the items in your face. All right, I have my face collage all glued down, glued down well enough that it's not gonna come up anyway. And it's time to move on to making my stencils. So what I recommend that you buy are these index dividers. These are plastic all the way through. You can get these at Dollar Tree very inexpensively. You can also use really any sort of plastic binder material or, or divider material. Just realize that some like these are pockets, so I'd have to cut them out to get the sheets, but they would work just fine. Some material is a little um, thicker, so just realize that you might have to cut your stencils a little bit bigger to compensate for the thickness of the material. You could even glue your collage onto this if you wanted to, just use scrap paper. Okay, I'm gonna need a Sharpie and an X-Acto knife to cut these stencils. And what I recommend that you start with is you take these and you cover up the holes. So these are made obviously to go in a three ring binder, so I don't wanna cover these up. So I'm just gonna put some tape, it could be any kind of tape, on both sides. We don't wanna cut down this material because we want our stencils to have a lot of material around the edge so that when we go to ink and go to print, we're protecting the paper underneath and the ink will only go where we've cut our hole through the stencil material. So what I do is, is I just start with the main big shape. So in this case, it would be the, the head or the face. And I would set this on top and um, make some decisions here. Now I have overlapping, I have lots of hair. So I want to think about, can I cut this in a way that it maybe adds more hair kind of marks and also that I have trapping so that stencils overlap a little bit because I don't want the white of the paper there. Um, you could decide that you do want the white of the paper, but I don't, I don't want that. So I'm gonna include the ear in this. And then here's the edge of my hair, but I'm gonna take 
this in more like this and create a way that it's going to overlap. And I can cut, again, different sort of way that I'm going to handle the hair over here. You don't have to use a Sharpie for this. Um, you know, any kind of permanent marker will do. Obviously, the Sharpie will show up really easy on here for when you want to cut it. Now, where I want the hole for this is this. This is what I'm going to cut out. Um, and just using my X-Acto and a cutting mat, very easy, I'm just going to cut this out. Now, I want to try to cut this in one nice piece because I could also do stenciling using the centerpiece as a positive stencil and ink around it, as well as inking inside the hole that I'm cutting out of this larger stencil. So for some parts that you cut out for your stenciling, you might want to think about that. It's like maybe hold on to some of these pieces that you cut out. Okay, so you can see that when I've cut my first stencil, I have both the negative, you know, the ink can go here, and I have this positive, which I can actually print and use this, so I'm going to hold on to that. If I put this back on my collage here, you can see that how I've cut this, you can see the pink edge of the hair is here, but I've made another edge here, so I'm going to have this layering of this edge of the hair. You guys are required to make six stencils to start with. And when you go to print, you might decide you want more of them. But to start, I want you to pretty faithfully follow the shapes and everything you have on your collage that you've established on your collage. All right, so for a second stencil, I'm working from big to small here. I'm going to do a stencil that will be the hair. So I could layer this on here just to see what I do actually did what I cut from the earth. Oh, and I forgot to put tape, so I'll be sure to do that before I print. And now I'm going to go in and transfer the marks, and I'm going to change some things a little bit, I think, for the hair. And you can see I'm not following things exactly, but I'm, you know, I'm changing things, making the hair be a little more loopy and stuff in places. So you can start to see how my stencils can line up. You can also see that I have these two positive pieces here and that I could use these, say, say I print this shape, I could then go into the print and lay this in slightly different place and just use parts of it to add, you know, more hair in different places or whatever. So. Again, like this first one, I'm really going to hold on to these positive shapes. Those first two stencils are pretty straightforward. I'm just establishing these big base shapes of my face. The, the face shape, the head shape, and the hair. Now, I have to start breaking down and combining these different areas of the face onto the same stencil because I don't want just to have one sh one shape on each stencil. So I can be inking these in different colors. I don't need to worry about that. So if there are different colors in my collage, that isn't really, you know, the issue or anything. What I want to make sure of is that I'm making parts of my stencil far enough away from each other that I could print them in different colors. So this is where 
you're going to make some decisions about how you're going to group things on your stencils. So if I decide to do that, maybe for this next one, I want to get everything established by a stencil that I have in my collage. So maybe with this next one, I'll put this on a separate collage. Sorry, <laughs> a separate stencil. Okay, so I might have some stencils that only have a few things on them, right? But as they start to layer up, it's going to, um, I'll have stencils for every part of my image. Okay, so I still need... really large shapes and you can see now how things are going to overlap because I'm basically tracing what I had as my original pieces of paper for my collage and I can't help it I'm gonna start adding other things okay so one thing you might notice here is I now have a shape within a shape. And you can't do that with a stencil, right? You're familiar with basic stencils like this. So for this zero, that has to be bridges here to hold this central piece on there. So if I was going to do something like this, this, this being cut away where I want the ink to go, and maybe this being a, a block for where the ink is, then I'm gonna to have to put bridges in there somehow. So maybe I'll do them like this. I don't necessarily have to have this many, but um, maybe these will sort of look like eyelashes in the eye, I don't know. So maybe I'll put a whole bunch of them and make it part of the design. So now I'm gonna be not cutting this part. And I'm going to be cutting, obviously, these areas around here. Also, in, in this stencil of this number three, these aren't floaties necessarily. Like, this is a, flo a floater that's being held by the bridges. But it would have this big sort of Mickey Mouse ear uh, peninsula hanging in here. And so these bridges help keep this flat when it's stenciling. So when you're cutting your stencils, think about that too. Like, are you going to have a big flappy piece that should be held in place with bridges. Also though, you know, if you have two circles, you could just define that with two different stencils, right? So here I have this circle that'll be cut out on this stencil and then I'll have this other circle here. And so I'll just have two stencils and that will give me um, that same, well, it isn't the same look because I'll have this printing and then this printing in a different stencil. Whereas with this, this, this circle will be a block out. So things to think about as you cut your stencils out. If you want to get the Sharpie off your stencils, this is just a Clorox wipe, but also um, nail polish remover would work or, or just rubbing alcohol because the Sharpie is alcohol based. You don't have to do this, but often I have areas on my stencil that I didn't end up cutting and they can be, you know, because I changed my mind, they can be distracting. Um, yeah, so it's nice to do this. It really, oh, and, and you print it at the same time. Um, you don't have to do this. We're going to be printing with oil-based inks. Um, they're not going to have any effect with this on the Sharpie and it's not going to print. It'll just wear off the stencils. I think a good reason to clean these is that by not being distracted by the Sharpie, you actually see the edge that you cut rather than the edge that you were going to cut. If you've done any stenciling before, you might know that you want to be careful about overcuts, right? Like cut this extends and then this extends. You know what, for the oil-based ink that we're gonna use, there's pretty good tack and we're use, gonna use very little amounts of ink. You really don't have to worry about the ink sort of spreading where there may, may be overcuts. If you make a mistake and cut something and you realize it's a total mistake, you could of course just do it over again. 
But if you don't want to do that, you could just put tape on both sides. Just cover it up. You're required to make six stencils. Now you might end up making more as you start printing and realizing what other variations of stuff that you want. But for now, you're required to make six this week. So I have my head one, my face. Remember that when you go to print, you can of course print some of these backwards, print the other way. And remember that I still have this center part, so I could start some prints by stenciling around the outside of this one. Those positive stencils don't count towards your six for this part of the project. So here's one. Here's my hair. It's sort of hard to see after that, so I'll just show you that then I started establishing the different shapes in the face. So this starts to develop. Then I've got this one. Remember, a lot of these I've purposely made so I could use them in, in two different orientations. So this then eyes and a ridge line on the nose. This could also be used in the other direction to give me variation on how I do the face. And then I made this last one, which defines the inside of the ear, gives them an earring, um, and some other things like more another shape in the hair, the larger shape of the nose, etc. So one, two, three, So I have my basic six stencils and I'm ready to start printing next week. And I'm also going to save these two larger ones. So actually I have eight stencils ready to go. I want to show you the stencils I did for this other collage. I approached it in a very similar manner, starting with the largest shapes. So here's the head and the ears are established. I cut down my index sheets, which I do not recommend you do, and I didn't have enough room because this was so close, so I had to tape on an extra little piece there so that the ink wouldn't go beyond and print out into my paper. So, I mean, it worked. Then I have this one. You can see these follow pretty closely the actual pieces of um, colored paper that I used for my collage. Once I started printing, I added more. I wanted more hair defined, and I also started to move away from what was on the collage. I wanted to add, these ended up being really creepy like teeth, but I have them in some of the prints I made. Wanted to get a little more abstracted. I definitely were, was playing around with the hair, so I added this. I also didn't like the way the two stencils defined the mouth. They were really big and I didn't like how that was looking, so I did that. Added freckles or dots around, so added another one. And then um, also added this when I went to, when, during when I was printing for the first time. And in here I'm really moving more abstract and getting away from kind of the feeling of the collage. And I really like this stencil a lot. This weird um, eyeball with a bridge in it really prints very oddly and strangely. And, and these abstract shapes, it starts to look very... Um, I don't know, like some strange alien or like um, the poor person's been infected. You know, not not unusual for me to think of that as a subject matter. But anyway, so you can always add more once you start printing. 
notice that I'm not having you guys register these at all. Um, when I was doing these, I did put X marks here. And my intent originally is that I could have the X marks on every single one and that would show how they line up every time. But I do, and then there would be a corresponding X on your print paper that you could line up. The issue with that is you get really tightly tied into how you're using the stencils and I don't want you guys to have that for this. I want you to play around with printing some in this orientation and some like this. Maybe on some I don't use this stencil at all. Maybe on this or like the other one that I just did. Maybe I'm printing, you know, this as a first run with lots of strange, you know, sort of painting with the stencil brush and stuff around this rather than starting with, um, you know, my set head shape. So purposely I want these to be loosey-goosey with how you put them. Maybe some I would print and I would kind of rotate them and move them. You know, this when they're not registered to each other, you know, in other words, created in a way where they have to line up in the same place every time, I think this gives you a lot more flexibility on flexibility on how you're going to use them and that's totally what I want to see in these prints. So have fun making your stencils. That's what you're doing for this week. Make your collage, make your related stencils, and do the other prep that you need to do to get ready for printing next week. Okay, have fun.